Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I am not a Christian because of my parents' faith. I am not a Christian because my parents made me go to Sunday school from the time I was little on. I am not a Christian because I went to VBS as a little boy saying the songs. I'm not a Christian because I know the stories of the Bible. I'm not a Christian because I go to church every Sunday. I'm not a Christian because I preach God's Word. I'm not a Christian because of all the good things my parents taught me to do. I'm not a Christian because of the disciplines that my parents have taught me. I'm not a Christian because I went to Christian schools growing up. I'm not a Christian because I went to a Christian high school. I'm not a Christian because I went to four years of college where I learned all these things about being a Christian. I'm not a Christian because I went to the seminary for four years and learned more than I ever realized I could learn about being a Christian. I am a sinner. I am a sinner who breaks God's laws every day. I am a man standing before you who while I'm wearing this white robe underneath, I am as black and as sinful as every person in this room. I am a sinner who has failed God's laws over and over and over again. I'm not a perfect person. I don't think there's a perfect person sitting in here. I don't think if you went to any church this week, next week, in years to come, that you'd ever find a perfect person. In fact, when you consider the church, when you consider what it means to be Christian, when we talk about knowing the Bible, when we talk about our brand mark, we put the fish on the back end of our car, many of these people have done sinful things. They've done things to hurt us. They've done things to offend us. We, as Christians, have done things to hurt others. We have done things to offend others. We've broken God's law. We've not lived up to His commands. Paul is very clear in Romans, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Paul is very clear that there is no way by our own merit, by the good things we do, to be saved. We have all seen what sin, even sin done by other Christians, has done in our lives. We've all experienced the pain that comes from sin's presence in this world. We've all experienced what it means to be broken people. And we all know, well, I hope we know, that it's not about what we know. But it's about the faith that God has already put in our hearts. I am a Christian because God has placed faith into my heart. Faith isn't something we know. It's not something that's tangible. It's not something that we can put, a, put in a book. Faith is something we can talk about. We can talk all around it. it, it but it's kind of like talking about love and never saying, I love you. Sure, on Valentine's Day, this is, you turn to your spouse and you don't talk about the wonderful feelings. You don't say, because of this chocolate, you don't just talk about love, but you say to your spouse, I love you. And that's how faith is. Faith isn't something that we can just talk about. Faith isn't something we can describe. It's not about sitting in a pew on Sunday morning. It's not about flipping through the Bible and memorizing every passage you can. Faith is so much more than that. It's more than the mind. It's God's Holy Spirit in our bodies, in our souls, in our mind. It's a complete change. It's a complete makeover, if you will. And there's many people who sit tight every mor Sunday morning. They sit tight reassuring themselves of what they know. Churches around the country are, at this time or later today or earlier in the day, are full of people. But the scary thing is, not all of them have faith. Some people come Sunday morning, they flip open the 
the hymn book. They, they sing our, the hymns. They read the readings. They hear the preaching. But that's where it stops. It's quelled there. It's all about the knowledge. This thing is, we don't just know God. At least not in our English idea of knowledge. But belief is so much more than that. Belief is a change of our entire being. It's not just a Sunday morning thing. It's also a Monday through Saturday thing. But there's so many people who Sunday morning come in here. They sing louder than anybody else. They, you know, they get up there and they give their testimony. But that's not what faith is. Faith is the Holy Spirit working in our hearts. Faith is the Holy Spirit making that change. See, we have no ability to make a change. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We have all sinned and broken His commands. We've all messed up. And because of that, we cannot earn. We cannot find any possible way to make ourselves right with God. It is only by the precious forgiveness of Christ. It is only by His work. That is what we put our faith in. The promise of God. We don't put our faith in something that is fickle. We don't put our faith in something that is just passing by. Matthew says it. Well, Jesus says it in Matthew chapter 6. Where your treasure is, there your heart is also. Our faith is not earthly, but it is heavenly. It's a trust in a God who has control over all things. It is trust in God who has control of our entire universe. It is trust in God who kept His promise. His promise that He made in Genesis 3. It's a complete trust that when God said, I will send a Savior, He did. He sent forth His Son born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem us from the law. John 3.16 is something we learn not because of the the words, not because we want to be able to spit it out whenever we can, but because of the truth that is in it. For God so loved the world, He loved each and every one of us, that He sent His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That is the promise we look forward to. That is what our faith holds on to. And I don't know about everybody here. I'm not sure when that faith came. Faith isn't something about what we do. But I know for myself, it happened nearly 27 years ago. When my parents, one Sunday morning, they took me to church. I was less than a, year, a, month, less than a month old at this point. And they took me forward in St. John's Lutheran Church in St. Louis, Missouri, up to the front of the church. The pastor said a bunch of words I didn't know. And then my parents handed me to the pastor. He took me in his arms. He reached down into the baptismal font. He said, Jonathan Robert Berkey, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And that is when the Holy Spirit put faith in my heart. That is when the Holy Spirit claimed me as His own. That is when God made that change in my life. Now, it hasn't been perfect. I admitted to you at the very beginning of the sermon that I mess up on a daily basis. But from that time on, I was one of God's children. I was one of those who Christ bought with His blood. From that time on, I was part of the family. It wasn't a promise I'd made. It wasn't a decision I'd made to God. It was all something He did for me. Faith isn't about what we can do. Faith is about what God has already done. Through Christ, that redemption. Through Christ, that purchasing of each one of us. Through His great love. Choosing you and me to be part of His family. Amazing. Amazing to think of God's faith. That free gift that He gives to us. And we make it so hard. We make it about what we know. We try to make it about the knowledge we have. We try to say, if I just learn this many verses, if I remember this and that. And when it comes down to it, we discover 
It's not about us. It's about God. It's about the change He has made. It's not a change that's short-lived either. It's a change that God is constantly working in our hearts. See, God is a good farmer. Using some of Jesus' own illustrations here. God prepared our hearts before we were ever even born, maybe. Before we ever even knew it, He was already getting that soil ready. Like a good farmer who's digging, who makes sure the fertilizer is laid, whose land is prepared. God is already preparing our hearts before we know it. And then, when that, when that faith comes, He doesn't just leave us. But He keeps working in, in our hearts. He keeps working in our lives. He keeps taking that dirt and turning it over. He keeps working it, the seed into the ground, the, however much fertilizer it needs, however much water, killing the weeds. He keeps working in our hearts. And sometimes that's a painful process. Sometimes as we're going through those changes, it can be downright painful. It can hurt. But those changes are necessary. Because it is breaking us away from this sinful world. It's God constantly working through us. Changing our lives. Changing our hearts and our minds and our bodies. Kind of picture the old... It was old dryers, and someone told me they were called the Wranglers. I don't know, you guys can correct me on those, but I picture one of those as you turn the crank, and the clothes goes through those, and it just squeezes all the water out. And that's what God is doing. He's working in our hearts and squeezing that sin out, and constantly working in each one of us, constantly bringing us to Him, constantly making those changes, constantly waiting for that chance when He's going to bring us home to Him. Because that is where we have our faith. In that promise that one day we will join God, our Heavenly Father in Heaven. In that promise that we will be taken away from the painful things of this world and brought into the glory of Heaven. That is where our faith is. Our faith is in that promise of God that because of Christ's sacrifice, we are His. I am not a Christian because of what I have done. I'm not a Christian because of what I know. I'm a Christian because God has made me His own. I'm a Christian because Christ has redeemed me with His own precious blood. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we do thank You for coming into our world. We thank You for the opportunities we have had to learn Your Word, to learn what You teach us. But Lord, we thank You most of all for you placing your faith, placing faith in you in our hearts. We thank you that you have redeemed us by your blood. We thank you that no matter how old we are or how young we are, that you want us to be yours. We thank you that through Christ's death on the cross, it paid the price for all times and all places. Lord, help us. Help us to never lose that faith, but to always trust in you. Help us to always be reassured of Your constant love for us. Help us to have the hope of the resurrection when we will join You in perfection. Oh Lord, we do thank and praise You. And in Christ Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.